This is a very, very important topic nowadays. So I'm Fadi Haddad from the Department of Leukemia at the University of Texas and the Anderson Cancer Center. And those patients, uh, they are defined as having a high white count of above 50 to 100,000. And it occurs in about uh, 18 to 20% of the patients with AML at the time of presentation. And we know that there are many disease factors that are associated with hyperleukocytosis, such as monocytic disease, KMT2A rearrangements, mutations of FLIP3, RAF pathway, NPM1, and others. And those patients have a higher risk of leukostasis, tumor lysis syndrome, DIC, organ infiltration, organ failure, and death. And therefore, those patients are considered to have a hematologic emergency, and they need cytoreductive therapies with hydria, hydroxyurea, uh, chemotherapy, or leukapheresis. So we wanted to look at MD Anderson, what was the outcomes and how we can improve the management of those patients. So we took all adults presenting with a white count of 100,000 and above over a 10-year period before, uh, between 2010 and 2020, and we excluded acute promyelocytic leukemia because of the clinic, uh, different clinical behavior and therapy. With the rate of complications, early mortality at one week, four week, eight weeks, and overall survival. And then we performed a logistic regression to see what are or who are the patients that will have a higher risk of four week mortality. And also we conducted univariate and multivariate analysis to look for factors that are associated with a worse overall survival. So the median age of our cohort was 65 years. Uh, the third of our patient, 34%, had an ECOG performance status of two or higher. And the median white blood cell count in our uh, cohort was 146,000, with around half of the patients having a white blood cell count of above 150. 61% uh, of our patients had a clinical leukostasis. Uh, with the most uh, presenting feature is acute renal failure in 24%. 23% of our patients had a tumor lysis syndrome, and all of this we're gonna back, we're gonna come back to them later uh, in our management algorithm. And 16% of the patients had uh, some sort of coagulopathy defined by low fibrinogen below 150, uh, needing uh, cryo transfusions, FFP, having some clinical picture of DIC. 6% six, six of our patients had complex cytogenetics, 11% had some sort of intracranial hemorrhage, and uh, two-thirds of our patients were previously managed in the ICU, but now we are admitting all those patients to the intensive care unit for management. And as uh, we might expect, the most frequent mutations were FLIT3 in 63%, followed by NPM1, 45%, and RAS pathway mutations, including KRAS, NRAS, TBL, PTPN11, and others, 27%. So I'm gonna talk now a bit about intracranial hemorrhage. So we had 80, 80 patients who had some brain imaging within four weeks of admission, and nine of those patients had intracranial hemorrhage, either subdural hematoma, intracranial hemorrhage, or subarachnoid hemorrhage within a medium time of nine days, ranging from even the first day of admission up to 25 days after admission. And seven out of those nine patients had a white count of, of, of above 150, 150, 100,000. And when we looked at those patients more in details, we found that the incidence of intracranial hemorrhage was more frequent in patient with coagulopathy, 33%, compared to patient without coagulopathy, 6%. What cytoreductive therapies did we use? So we used mostly hydroxyurea in 96% of the patients, cytarabine in 54%, and leukapheresis in 24% of the patients. And patients who had leukapheresis tended to have a higher incidence of clinical leukostasis and less use of cytarabine. So I'm going to look a bit about early, uh, at early mortality. So we had uh, two patients who died within the first week <clears throat> and 11 patients who died within the, four, the first four weeks of presentation. And this is a, a new syndrome that we are defining nowadays. So those, this specific group of patients is having early mortality that is a slightly different and 
uh, with a slightly different phenomena, I would say, compared to other types of leukemia with not, with, without this elevated high white counts. And this could be due to some severe inflammatory response uh, happening in the body. Uh, the median overall survival of our cohort was 14.3 months with a two-year survival of 39%. And when we looked at the factors associated with a four-week mortality, we found that mainly older age, coagulopathy, and the use of renal replacement therapy were associated with worst outcomes. On the other hand, patients who, had, who were older had worse ECOG performance status and had complex cytogenetics also did worse and had a worse overall survival compared to other patients. The use of leukapheresis or the presence of leukostasis did not impact overall survival. So what should we do for those patients? We need to think of other cytoreductive strategies rather than the ones we are using now with leukapheresis, uh, chemotherapy for cytoreduction or other, and maybe try to change dosing or change the types of therapy that we use, uh, maybe start performing a brain CT scan on all patients to look for hemorrhage, have a systematic nephrology consultation early on in patients because of the high risk of renal failure or tumor lysis syndrome, admit all our patients with hyperleukocytosis for management in the ICU to reduce the risk of mortalities and put everybody on broad spectrum antibiotics to decrease the risk of sepsis, septic shock, multi-organ failure.